your dick fucked up? Does your life suck shit? Is your wife about to leave you cause you're annoying? Sounds like you've got a lot of fucking problems. Don't you sweat cause Stavi's gonna solve them. He's pretty fucking dumb but he can figure out your problems. Here is an example, you should always use a condom. Yeah, I just, I guess, I guess I think, I guess maybe you don't always have to is my point. Like, maybe there's some situations where you don't have to use a condom, you know? True. That's but, true. Um, you know, you know what? Let's just go ahead and... Why don't we just finish the song? How about that? show's about to start. It's called Stavi Solves Your Problem. Maron, I love it. <clears throat> I can't wait. I can't wait to solve some motherfucking problems. Ralph, why don't you hit us with the first question, Peppy? Peppy. What's up, Stavi, baby, motherfucking advice hotline. This is uh, Alex. I'm from Cleveland. Um, are my cum shot days over, man? Like, I haven't had distance on these things in a really long time. Mm. Like, a real long time. They just kind of fall out of me. Um, I'm, like, I'm a young guy, you know, I'm like 25. So, I just want to know if if I'm ever going to get it back. Um, you know, I'm not out here trying to, like, uh, bust lips. I'm just trying to not dribble on chins. I'd rather not take dick pills, but if it's what I got to do, it's what I got to do. Let me know if you can get me on a regimen. Thanks. <clears throat> well, brother, uh, I, first of all, in my experience, taking a dick pill doesn't make the doesn't have any effect on the load. Um, but basically, you have to uh, not jack off as much. And I think the longer you fuck... Now, this is not scientific. This is in my personal experience. The longer you jerk your cock without busting, the fatter the load. Do you know what I'm saying? So let's say you were just jerking off for... Set by, you're by yourself. You pull up a trusted, you know, video on X videos. You look up a classic, right? Um, something you've beaten off to since you were 17 years old. You can probably... Let's say two, you know, 90 seconds, 180 seconds, you know what I mean? Two, 240, <laughs> just different, just doing a second so it sounds better. But you could probably jack off, you could probably come within three minutes, right? And that's how many up and downs. Let's say one, two, three, four, five. Let's say, you know, let's say you jack your cock off three times per second that's let's just say it's a hundred up in a hundred up and downs you're gonna get a shorter bust than if you were with the woman you were getting sucked off you got jacked off you were fucking the whole experience takes about 25 minutes you're probably gonna bust a fatter rope in that situation um so jack off less Go whatever you're doing now is too much. You 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 could probably still jack off once per day, and maybe save up, save up before you meet the person up, meet up with the person. If it's something that's important to you, you know. I personally, sure, there's some times where I really want to blast a fat one, but if you're kind of come inside, if you're not gonna come across some titties, I get when you want it to be cinematic. So when you want it to be cinematic, I would say just. Don't jack it for the day day before. But leading up to that, you want to jack every day because you want or at least every other, because you want to keep I hear it's good for your prostate. But right before, don't jack and uh try not to bust quickly. That's my advice for you. It was bad math, I know that, but shut up. <clears throat> P A A G. We Fat can... ass Asian girl. Ah, that's a nice. I'm not mad at that whatsoever. I need me a P. I need me a PAG. Edging is correct, Harold Finch Julius. Edging will definitely get get you a fatter nut, sting style. My dick is small, yale, yale. Um, respect to the PAGs out there. DM me. DM me. Where you at? Ah. <clears throat> I would get pegged by a pack, no problem. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. <clears throat> Next question there, Ralph. Hey, 
Hey, Stavi. Uh, this is James from Texas. Long time listener, first time caller. Jimmy. I have a bit of an issue that I was wondering if I could get some advice on. Of course. Um, so I have a long time girlfriend. Uh, I'm 22. She's 21. We've been dating for about three years now. And for the first time, she let me come on her face. Nice, dude. Respect. So I did. We were fucking, and I came on her face after I was done. But I think because it was the first time, um, she got a little scared and kind of like jittered when I did it. Mm -hmm. And so a little bit got into her eye. And I felt horrible. Like I, I, I told her I'm really sorry, and I hugged her and stuff, and um, she was crying, told me it burned. Oh, Jesus um, She was Christ. pretty pissed, actually. And I know for a fact she doesn't want to ever do it again. Uh, but uh, a few days later, she went to the doctor because the redness didn't go away. And now she's telling me that she thinks she has glaucoma. No. And I don't know if that's possible. So really my question for you is, do I stay with her and hope that I can nut on her face again? Or do I leave the bitch because she thinks she got glaucoma from my nut? That's yeah, the question, anyway, huh? Help me would be really nice. Uh, love, Snobby. Bye-bye. <laughs> Let's say this is not fake. Let's take this at uh, face value. Um, so, okay, I can, I'm can. i gathering by through context clues that this was something you wanted for a while. It's not like it came out of the blue. Now look, pal. First of all, you don't you don't get glaucoma. If that's the case, my grandfather had glaucoma. Just, how'd this motherfucker get it? If that's how... <laughs> Just some fucking alcoholic, chain-smoking, 75-year-old Greek man with a little fisherman's hat holding his fucking eyes open and getting jizz in them. Um... No, you did not give her glaucoma. Um, but look, you're 20. What did you say? 23 or 22? She's 21. You've been dating for three years. <laughs> and I'm not saying this is the reason, but this could be the straw that breaks the camel's back. In general, my general life advice to young people in three year relationships that clearly span high school and colleges, you should probably get out of them. Go live a life. What, are you going to marry this person? First of all, the world's going to end. Go get some fucking dick and pussy. Go crazy, okay? 22 is too young to stay with somebody that not only you don't click. Look, coming on her face aside. Let's say it's not coming on her face. Let's say it's whatever, getting your, licking your ball. If, if, the, if the roles were reversed and she really needed something sexually, she really wanted something sexually, and, uh, you know, you made a bit. She wanted to squirt all over your fucking face, and some got in your nose. And you're like, oh, I can't smell. I've lost my sense of smell. You fucking bitch. My nostril doesn't work anymore. I can't smell. I can't smell pizza anymore. I would tell her to break up with you. So, you definitely don't look at your age. You should probably break up anyway at some point. But you definitely should break up. The only way I would say don't break up is if you just click on every fucking, on everything. And it seems like you're not clicking sexually, to put it lightly. Uh, it sounds like you want to be a little dirtbag, want to do the stuff you've seen in pornography, even though your dick is, you know, one-eighth of the size of the guys in the, in the pornos. You want to feel like them. And uh, trust me, there's girls out there that are going to oblige. And this isn't one of them. So, don't break up with her because of this, but I think this is enough for you to sit here and ask yourself, especially because this is what it sounds like, this is, this is what's going on in your head, do the pros and cons list. Now, maybe the, the pros outweigh the cons, maybe, but this has triggered an automatic um, this has triggered an automatic, what the fuck is the word I'm looking for? <sighs> Not review, sort of review. Appraisal, I don't fucking know. My my brain is a little all over the place today. This has triggered a, an automatic review of your relationship. And, uh, you're a young guy, 
you want to go fucking blast nuts on people's faces. You don't have a dribbly nut like the last caller. Get out of there, chief. Okay? Let's take off. <clears throat> give, me the, give me the next one there, Ralph. Hey, Stavi, it's Omar in Denver. I got a question for you, man. Um, it's kind of right before COVID broke out. <laughs> I, uh, I matched this girl on Tinder, and, you know, we went out a couple times before she got wild, and uh, we hooked up a couple times, and nice. she uh, gives the best dome that I've <laughs> ever had. Yes. But the catch is my bitch does not like really any Asian food, but specifically ramen and sushi. We've been hanging out a little bit through quarantine, you know, trying what? to touch on each other, but like, I'm trying to wonder, or uh, figure out if it's fucking worth it to date a girl that doesn't like the foods that I like. Like, what's the <laughs> fucking point of not being able to go out on like a sushi date or a ramen date? Where do you draw the line stuff? I'll take my answer off line. Thanks. <laughs> What the fuck? So wait, she does like ramen or she doesn't? You like Asian food and she doesn't. <laughs> yes, that's the problem. <laughs> what the fuck? You having every meal with her? Every single meal is with her. You can't get fucking ramen on your own with the fellas? Are your boys gonna fucking eat a fucking tonkatsu bowl with you and then suck your nuts? Or do you go get some fucking linguine and then get the best dome of your life? What the fuck kind of question is this? I'm fucking pissed off. That you would even bring this to me. You continue getting this fucking head. And you eat a fucking hamburger with a smile on your face. Knowing she's about to fucking tie your nuts in a bow with her tongue. Good lord. You don't deserve this fucking head. You should break up with her because you don't deserve her. Okay. The palate's not great. She doesn't like umami unless it's coming out of your nuts. Is that really a fucking issue? Jesus fucking Christ, man. You can't have some ribs with this girl? You can't go- fuck. You can't get tacos? And then have some fucking sashimi with your boy Lloyd? Get the fuck out of my face. I'm fucking disgusted in this question. You fucking... Can you play... Can you play the end of that again for me, Ralph? Sure, give me one second. No problem. We've been hanging out a little bit through quarantine, you know, kind of crushing on each other, but, like, I'm trying to wonder... Uh, figure out... If it's fucking worth it to date a girl that doesn't like the foods that I like, like what's the fucking shut up, bitch? Get this man out, out of here! Get this motherfucker! Shut up, bitch! How fucking dare you, motherfucker! This is the first time a fucking call caller has gotten piss caged. Put him in the fucking cage, everyone. Ugh. Puh. Puh. I'm fucking disgusted that you would ask me that question. <clears throat> okay. Let me. I wish I could burn some sage to cleanse the fucking space I'm in right now. <clears throat> okay. All right. I'm ready to begin. Go ahead. Go ahead, Ralph. Hey, Stavi. Uh, I have a problem with a dirty, greasy Turk. Um, so I met this girl off of Tinder, and things were going well, having a lot of sex. Nice. Um, and we were fucking in my 2002 Honda Accord in a parking garage. Respect. And she slapped me in the face and started calling me a c I was a little bit alarmed. Uh and I pushed her off, her off me, and uh, I asked her why she was doing this, and she said that, oh, it's like a sleeping with the enemy sort of thing because her dad is really anti-synthetic. <laughs> so a little bit uncomfortable with this. Uh, what would your advice be? 
<laughs> My advice? Fucking go get one of those fucking hats from Fiddler on the Roof. Play Hava Nagila while you eat her ass. <laughs> If I got my dick sucked, -da 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 -da. would I put up with dehumanizing behavior from a hot Turkish bitch? It would make me feel really bad, but I'd bust a nice fat nut if I got my dick sucked. Um, I mean, I don't know, man. How do you feel about it? <laughs> uh,. There isn't really any kind of, there's not really that much anti-Greek sentiment. I guess if it was anybody, it would probably be a Turk. Um, so I can't really put myself in your shoes. I'm not a religious or, you know, ethnic minority in any kind of way that, that really affects me negatively. But that's a deeply personal decision, my man. It sounds like you didn't like it. If your little fucking circumcised prick went when she slapped you and told you to put on a fucking yarmulke, then you'd have your answer. But if it's something that alarms you and you don't particularly enjoy it, it's the same as any other fucking weird. I mean, maybe it's not the same, but if anything, she tried to do something sexual to you without your consent. It's a weird move, whether that's, you know using a slur in violence or it's like choking somebody without their consent you gotta feel you know either get asked or ask or you never know what somebody's been through so um that was fucked up on her part uh, but she's probably used to doing that to a bunch of Jewish guys that don't get get so little pussy that they have never questioned it good for you for standing your ground uh, but it's something that you have to write. How do you feel? I don't know how you feel about it. So you got to make that decision. Is the pussy worth it? To debase your religion and people. Um, so because you called, I'm going to say it's not. Yeah, and then she said, and then she said her dad is anti-Semitic. So in a so, the fact the way the 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 fact that her dad factors into how she fucks in such a direct way, that's another problem right there. That's another problem right there, Habibi. I would I would I don't know unless she's very hot. I would get out of there. Um. Yeah, you'd be like, oh yeah? Sleeping with the enemy, your dad's homo uh, fucking anti-Semitic. You can call you can call me whatever you want, but I'm gonna have to fuck your dad in the ass. <laughs> I'm gonna have to fucking spread those hairy brown cheeks. That's what you gotta do to see if she's about it. <clears throat> So yeah, man, um, pretty weird stuff here, but uh, good for you for getting pussy on one hand. Let's look at the wins before we look at the losses. And on the negative, if you didn't like it, tell her you didn't like it. And if it's a deal breaker for her, maybe it's not meant to be, but maybe you get a couple more nuts off. Uh, who's to say what you want to do? But again, I would say this is personal. Look deep into your soul. And also think about what happened to your penis while it was happening. And the, your heart and your cock will get combined. Have a caucus with them. And that will give you your answer. Uh, next, a question. Ralfio. Hey, Stav. Uh, long time listener. First time caller. Uh, I got myself in a bit of a predicament that I think you could help me with. Um, or at least I think you have experience with. So I started dating this girl on Tinder. We went on a few dates and during one of our dates, she told me that she was talking to her friend about me. And I guess her friend's like, the hell, let me date him too. And so then she was like, yeah, I'm totally cool with that. Uh, which oh, led fuck? into a discussion about having a threesome. 
Hey. Um, I've never had a threesome before. You know, I'm a bit inexperienced in that regard, a bit nervous about it, actually. It's making me sweat talking about mm -hmm. it right now. Yep. Yes, sir. And, uh, you know, I kind of have feelings for this girl, and I'm wondering if it's going to, you know, muddy the waters a bit. But quite honestly, like, if she just wants something casual anyways, like, right. why not dip into a little bit of a threesome? You yes. Know, like, kind of how your mother used to say, yes. take a no thank you bite when you have food that you've never tried before. Like, I don't know. I want a no thank you bite. <laughs> I want to mm -hmm. try a threesome. <laughs> yes. And but you deserve I don't know. It. I guess I just want your advice. Uh, what, what would you do in that situation? I uh, think you suck. I would get my little prick dill double sucked. The hell kind of question. Look, I understand. I understand being worried. I understand being nervous. I, I see. I was lucky. I was baptized by fire sexually into a threesome. I wasn't prepared, and I got the worst threesome of my life uh, out of the way. Couldn't get hard. Wasn't expecting to. You know, whatever. Come see me live. I do a nice fifteen minute bit at the end of my <laughs> at the end of my act about it. Um, I would say take a dick pill. You sound like a young, healthy man. Take a dick pill. Get your dick nice on hard, and uh, fuck these girls. You got nothing to worry about, Chief. They seem to be driving the boat. You just need to fucking lay back, sit in the sun, enjoy your time. Try it. You might fail. It might be a fucking one of the biggest losses of your life, but it'll be funny. Okay. A b one other thing that I... The other way that I live my life whenever I'm trying to make a decision is... Uh, is this the more interesting decision I could make? Is this interesting? Whatever happens after this, will it be more interesting than if I had not done it? This will make your life more interesting. You'll have, you'll have had a threesome. That's a big leg up. Okay? You sound nervous. It's cute. Juice. There's no honor in threesomes. What are you fucking... It's not, it's not fucking baseball. It's not steroids. Who gives a fuck? And by the way, I would do steroids to hit home... It probably feels awesome to hit home runs. So take a dick pill if you're fucking feeling nervous. And fuck both these girls. I, that's what I want. I want you to fuck both these girls. Okay? This hap I've had a couple situations like this, and it only gets... Listen, after you've done it once, it's less It's less scary. And this seems like the kind of thing they're into. So you, you think you're... You know, this is kind of their thing, probably. So... I, you got nothing... I, thank you for calling in. And I need you to... You know what? I'm asking you. As a friend, please fuck both of these girls. And call back and let us know how it goes. I love you. And that, please call back. Next question there, Ralph. What's up, Stabby baby, you nasty little motherfucker? <laughs> That's me. I got a predicament for you. I, I'm fucking, I've been thinking about this shit for like a year now. So, I'm 25. And I've had two girlfriends for like a year, dude. It's fucked up. One of them's 23, and the other one's 41. Wait, With two you, teenage kids, right? You currently have two girlfriends? <laughs> yeah, that's correct. <laughs> this man is on some secret family shit. Okay. So I don't know what the fuck to do with myself, because, like, I don't want to be a dad, but I could be a motherfucking stepdad. I mean, no. that ain't, <laughs> that ain't no. shit. But no. So here's my predicament. The 23 year old I'm with, uh, she's not on birth control. She doesn't want to do any of that shit. And she wants kids. And she won't let the me fuck? put it in her ass. But the other one, the 41 year old, I could do whatever to this girl. And it's fucking. The, yeah, because life is beating her A1, down. A1. But there's two kids involved. And. Oh, man, I just don't know what the fuck to do. What do you? What would you do? Would you? Would you go and be with the? And they're both a little crazy, but the twenty-three-year-old's a little more crazy than the other. And I'm sure I convinced her. I, I probably spent uh, like fifteen hundred bucks last year on Plan B for the twenty-three-year-old. Are you but out of your fucking? Forty-one-year-old. <laughs> I 
it's whatever. I could bust nuts in her. She's got birth control. I don't know. I've been thinking about this shit for a year straight. I don't know what to do. What a fucking dumb piece of I'm shit. I'm a shithead. <laughs> Let me know what you would do in my situation right now. Later, pussy. <laughs> The, the the problem you have, you, you don't think you should fucking stop? Do they know about each other? Are you cheating on them? Do they think you're in a monogamous relationship? <laughs> yeah, the 41-year-old is trying to get a fucking father for her children. She needs, she needs somebody to teach her fucking sons how to shave their, their fucking facial hair into a chin strap. Sounds like that's the kind of community you're from. Um, yeah, I don't... Break up with both these women. Fuck. You need to... You need to, you need to do some introspection. <laughs> I can be a stepdad. Imagine the life lessons this fucking idiot would give to people. Um, damn. What would I do if I was in your position? Okay, let me think about it that way. Yeah. Do you want to be with these women when you're 25? First of all, you're not going to be a stepdad. You're a fucking idiot. This is the coolest thing in the world to you. You use plant, you fuck it, you're feeding a woman plan B like they're Werther's Originals. You got a fucking, and that's, you got, you got a fucking candy dish full of plan B. She's like, I'm not into birth control, so your solution is to feed her even more powerful forms of birth control that fuck her shit up even worse. Also, what kind of an animal is this woman? <laughs> Every girl that I've been with that has taken a plan B, they're like, oh, it's gonna fuck me up. She's just fucking gobbling them up. That's a fucking problem right there. So, I will say this. You're a negative... You're a net negative on both of these women's lives. I can't prove it. I don't really know. But I'm positive. Just given your demeanor. Given how much... Given the fact that you said the cooter is A1. Um, there's no chance you're bringing anything but negativity one way or another to them. You're a weight, and they're sinking. Uh, let Cut them loose, and just start a life on the bottom of the ocean floor where you belong, with other bottom feeders. Let the 41-year-old fucking, you know, snag an accountant who's never had his dick sucked. Okay? She's practiced on you f fine. You're never gonna fucking teach any life lessons to her children. Let her find some fucking... Overweight man that has barely had sex. Let her let her put that A1 cooter on him. And let him in exchange bring her some 401k. Some retirement benefits and health insurance. From Liberty Mutual where he works. Okay? And the 23 year old. You're fucking. You're, you're taking a fucking sledgehammer to her ovaries every time you bust one of your. And my guess is you have low sperm. Your, your sperm. Although it's tough to say. It's always dumb asses like this that have children, but stop, you stop, she's got a she's got a fucking. You're gonna be the guy that she's like. Oh, can you can you imagine? I used to fuck Brian. Yeah, chin strap Brian, with the Yankees fitted. Even though he'd never been, he'd never been on a fucking. He'd never been on the East Coast. Um. Let them free. Set them free. And just, you know, make a, make a life. Make a life at the bottom of the ocean where you belong. Marry an old, an old shoe, an old boot that a fisherman left that sank there. <clears throat> Certainly don't father any children and, uh, you know, find a woman that's on birth control, but that doesn't have children. How about that? How about that? Is that fair? 
Is that an actionable item for you? Let me put, okay, let me, I'm sorry. I've been, I've been talking poetically and metaphorically. Let me put it this way. Find the woman your age you can bust inside of without repercussion. Ooh, baby. All right. We're about to introduce my buddy, the hilarious Mark Norman. So let's everyone say hello to Mark. Marky. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that fucking prick. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> What's up, dude? Yo. How you doing, hey. buddy? Sorry about that. Oh, no worries. Looking good, looking cute. How's that lighting? Is it weird? Is it it's all right. Too Epstein con yeah. Epstein, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It looks you nice. You do look like a hostage. Uh, a little no. interrogation y, but you're cute. Uh, you're cute too. Hey, you look great. I stop mean. it. All I'm, right, all, I'm, I'm all lit up over here. Um, thanks, buddy. Thanks for doing the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Oh, look at that. Is this your apartment? The pad? Yeah, yeah. It's a nice pad. I can't afford it. I'm, I'm bleeding money. I'm going oh, to right. belly up in a week. <laughs> yeah, dude. You're fucked, huh? Fuck you're fucked cause... on the road. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing's what's, going my way. What's the plan? How are you going to make money, dude? I'm thinking Twitch. I've been writing for Nick Cannon, so that's nice. something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That had you written all over it. Uh, that, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that sounds like a Mark point. I did a Zoom with a guy for like a temple, like a Jew gig. And uh -huh. this guy was like, how do you feel about Jews? I was like, I love Jews. I'm like a huge fan. I'm, I'm a Jew Whatever there is for Wigger, I'm that for Jew. <laughs> and he was like, "Oh, really? Because I thought you hated it." I was like, "Why would I? What do you got? What do you get? I'm in comedy." He goes, "Your your website has a page called Jews." Oh, right. And I was like, "That's a shrine." Right, right, right. And he didn't buy it, so I might I might have to change that. Yeah, you might have to, because I remember I remember that I remember when you first made your website. I think I went when I was gonna make my own website. I looked at like my friends, and I was like, "Oh." How should I make a comedy website? And I remember thinking, you know, I really like the Jew section, but I don't know how that's going to play <laughs> to the public, but respect. I had no idea. I thought it was an homage, like a, yeah. a tip of the, uh, the yarmulke. Uh, well, My bad. Big fan right, of buddy. the heaps. I love them. I do, I, do like, I do like a nice Jew myself. I also, I grew up in Baltimore. I mean, you grew up in New Orleans. There, there weren't that many Jews in New Orleans, though, right? There was a small sect. I even hung out next to my high school was the Jewish Community Center, and I would play ping pong there every day and and clean up. <laughs> I don't know if you've heard, but the uh, I didn't know the chosen bad. people are not great with the paddles. <laughs> I would have thought I would have thought they could have handled paddles. I don't know why. Well, uh, a sport that's like earthbound. You know, you don't have to jump. <laughs> right, you don't, you right. don't really have to. There's not that much side to side quickness involved but yeah you're thinking of the asians now they True. are unbelievable the on best. a ping pong table and and but yeah the the jews when you go to a jcc and play a hoop with like a couple of like joshes and right. adams and slowmos yeah you feel yeah, yeah, like, yeah you feel like a black guy yeah there's so cool. one there's always one awesome jewish yes. kid who's unbelievable who's like right. you know six two and just like shooting threes and can dunk and everybody else is like you're the you're the king yeah um i had it there was a lot of we, we did play in my neighborhood you de you definitely played sports along ethnic lines it was always like oh yeah as a child i got into a lot of like ch child race wars over <laughs> like pick up pick up football games and like soccer games and it was always like yeah. greeks versus white trash versus yes. like hispanic kids one time, right. I think I don't know if I told the story on the stream. We for some reason there was like we we played like a group of Arab kids that were playing football with us, and they like a bunch of them just started fucking us up, like sucker punched us, and one what? kid cleated me on the fucking face. What? And then my friend, uh, my friend called his brothers, and it was we were like maybe fourteen, like the ad was our age, like we were somewhere between the ages were like twelve to like sixteen. And a car full of like twenty-seven-year-old Greek men with bats came out to just to just like threaten these children. Wow, man! Yeah. Was this pre nine eleven? This was. It must have been post. It must have been oh, post. Well, that yeah. adds to the heatedness. With yeah, the Greeks, absolutely. You know? They uh, lost a lot of delis. That's right. Yeah. And diners. There was a Greek church actually in like 
in like around there that survived, I think. Wow. So that take that. We were we were the ones. It was actually I, us. I was They're the same. I went to public school, and it, it, you're right. It's like jail. You know, like you look at the cafeteria, and it was black, white, uh, other. You know, like yeah. Indian and uh, whatever the hell brown was over there, <laughs> right. and then Hispanic. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was all divided, but it, we yeah. were all cool with each other. But it was cool. Right, right, right. Yeah. No, that's how. That's probably how public school was too. I guess. I, you know what? For me, school was a little more intermixed than when you just went home because it was like i went to like a uh i went to a uh like a magnet or not a ma- yeah it was like you had to bus into the school like you didn't yeah. nobody lived in that you had to like test score in uh but everyone just like went from their little ethnic neighborhoods to the school so you know uh. it was all it was all mixed there but once you got home it's all greek it's i mean nothing but greeks i didn't leave like my little corner of i didn't know about baltimore until i was like 20 years old because all of my, Greek town was all I knew. It was like an eight right. by eight block, you know, eight by eight Jeez. blocks. Yeah, yeah. Wow, what is this? The the forties? It What's felt like on? that. Yeah, it felt That's like crazy. that in Baltimore. But yeah. I guess pre like I don't know how old are you? I'm thirty one. Wow, you got to tell your face and body. Yeah. But, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, I'm thirty six, and you know it's pre cell phone. I grew up, you know, pretty much late eighties, nineties, and right. you know, back then you didn't have a car yet, so that was all you knew. You know? Right, you didn't, absolutely. You didn't know about Facebook. Oh, and other, see, I, all the fucking all the Greeks had Nextels except for me. We were poor, but all the other Greeks that I grew up with were running their father's carryouts at fifteen. So they all had the amount of money they were going to make for the rest of their lives. They had it at fifteen. So I was just wow. friends with these guys who had new Jordans, had like the chirp chirp Nextels, and yeah, I was the only yeah. fucking asshole without a phone. I didn't even have a phone. Uh, yeah, had, damn. But you know, what are Same. you gonna do? What um, are you gonna do? I remember going to the suburbs. It was like heaven on earth. Yeah. Leaving the bike in the front lawn, the door unlocked. The mom comes out with orange slices, and she's still yeah. fuckable, you know. <laughs> yeah. And then you go to your neighborhood, and your your mom's got a mustache, yeah. and your dad's hitting her, and your bike gets stolen. It's brutal. Oh, plenty, plenty of uh, plenty of stolen bikes. But um, anyway, Mark, the re- so yeah, it's good to get a little fucking background. The whole point of this show it's called Stabby Solves Your Problems, and we help these motherfuckers. And so I kind of want to get them. I want. I want them to understand why you're such an expert. You know what I mean? Like what you have to offer uh, when people are calling in with their problems. Well, I think I think we can get to it. I think you've lived an interesting life. You know, grew up in New Orleans. Uh, you know, you became sort of. I, I'm interested in like when you were a, you were a kid. It seems like you've been as as long as I've known you. You've always liked to have a good time. You're a nice. Yeah. You're a party guy. You'll get nice and fucked up. Yeah. Uh, you're a real, real uh, uh, pussy hound. I think it would sure. be fair to say in your single days. I had my uh, run. Yeah, you, you definitely had a run where you were constantly trying to fuck. I would say pathologically. Uh, I think. <laughs> I think. Well, <laughs> in my defense, yes. I was in a relationship for twelve years, and then oh I got out. So it was just like Tinder was new, Bumble was right. new, and uh, I was, you know, a thirty-one-year-old and i had to get out there and i wanted to try it out and live it up and i was in new york and i had a couple tv credits so why not? oh yeah time to get your dick sucked. you put that you put that picture you you know uh giving conan a noogie you're getting you're, get, yes. you're getting you're getting some head that was so number one photo. okay so what happened before you were in that long-term relationship were you were you a wild kid or what was going on oh, like dude i mean we were feral our parents I mean, you want the whole backstory. Buckle up, fatty. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah, take yeah. A minute. Hit me but, with it. You know, I grew up in New Orleans in a in a fucked up neighborhood, really bad, poor black neighborhood, and we were the white family, and we lived in a mansion. Hilarious. And we had no money. Yeah, your dad's just out like there. Did. Yeah, your dad's just out there in a white linen suit. Off yeah. the property, please, boss. <laughs> 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 I do declare. <laughs> He's got a mint julep. Yeah, collecting unemployment in a fucking seersucker suit. (laughs) That's my dad's. My dad's like N word rich. Like he was always had a Beamer that didn't run. He had a mansion that had no running water, and he just wanted to be successful so bad, but he never was. So, but he had the the Uh, yes, Tremonts of success. That's that's big Greek. Greek people are all like that. We all lived in a shitty house, but it's like. They buy beamers. They fucking yes. their their wife gets a new gold watch, a fur, all this shit. But you right. know, you live in a hundred thousand dollar house or whatever. Yeah. So that was yeah. your dad. I see. I see. So he's trying. He's putting on a lot of appearances. Yes. He's trying and to. Yeah. 
he was a my dad was a Karen back before Karen was a thing. He was a male Karen. Like and <laughs> as the white kid in the in the hood, you want to yeah. be you want to fit in, you want to be accepted. And with a Karen dad, there's no chance of that. I remember one time these kids were playing in the uh, the fire hydrant, like you know, like out of a yeah. movie. And you know, like black kids jumping up and down in the fire hydrant. And my dad would drive up and go, "We're on our way to school, mind you." And my dad goes, "Excuse you." That's illegal. Oh like, my Jake, god! Get out of that. What are you doing? Get out. Yeah. Just go, go. You know, son, like, if go. you ever catch these boys play this, my my son, right? He holds you out the window. This kid right here, if he ever sees you, he's telling me, and I'm telling the police. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I mean, another time, I didn't know what it was. I was so young. I was probably ten, and there were prostitutes kind of like waiting around in front of our house, like looking at their nails and doing this shit, like trying to pick up tricks. Right. And my dad was like. Uh, ma'am, could you not stand there? This is my house, and it, you're you're making it look bad. And they were like, "Fuck you, motherfucker!" You know <laughs> right, the whole thing. Right, right, and right, were, right. Like tits are out and everything. And yeah, yeah. It was it was tough, but so we had a trans gen, no, transvestite nanny. Interesting. Yeah, my parents are the most liberal, open-minded people on the planet, like to a fault. Right. You know, where I'd get my bike jacked, and I'd be like, "Mom, they stole my bike," and then she'd be like, "They need it. They need it." Like, Come on, yeah. I need, yeah, I need a bike too. Son, so. that man who sucked your penis, he was molested also. So <laughs> yeah, you have to also that. think about it. Yeah, exactly. So uh, yeah, yeah, it was it was tough living. We got robbed all the time. Uh, the alarm would go off like at you know two in the morning. As a kid, you're just under the covers, like there's somebody now. In the why house. can I ask you why your father felt the need to like live in that mansion like why that part of town what was he trying to prove why wouldn't you I, just i don't might know have been a midlife it might have been uh, he he hit he hit some money with an inherent inheritance of a uh, grandparent died and i think this was like his big shot this is my last shot i'm i'm 30 something years old here we go i'm right. buying a mansion and he's a big preservation like right. historical uh, preservation yeah yeah, yeah yeah he's part of that society so he's like this will be my end i'm buying this dilapidated mansion and i'm gonna change the whole neighborhood and you know it, it did interesting work. Remember, we built the fence in the backyard big wooden fence they, they wrote kill whitey on yeah. it I mean, there it were was... glory holes in it within the hour yeah there was <laughs> yeah, no... <laughs> exactly. exactly uh but yeah tough tough go i we got robbed so much and you know, to, as a kid, it's normal. Like, my friends would come over from the suburbs. They would be like, what the fuck? You got a nanny, right. a black guy wearing a wig. Your, your parents are never here. We're skateboarding in the living room because it was <laughs> so cool. And uh, it, was a, it was a wild Jesus scene, man. Jesus Christ. Okay, so you're out of your little feral kid. And yeah. uh, were you... And I lived two blocks from the French Quarter, by the way. Oh, was my like, God. You know, party yeah. city, and you could drink outdoors. And it was the 90s. Nobody cared about, you know... If you were 21 or not, nobody gave a shit. Right, 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 right. Oh so, yeah, it was it was rampant. And you you hang out with a bunch of other white degenerates. Right, a bunch of skateboarders, a bunch mm-hmm. of New Orleans skateboard kids probably. Back uh, in my day, you skateboarded past a couple of black kids playing basketball, they would make fun of you. They'd be like, "Look at these fucking losers!" You know, now I'm, I'm in New York, I see all these black kids skateboard. I'm like, "Hey, look at this! Yeah, cultural they're, appropriation." They're ollieing to the court to play basketball. Yeah. They get off the board and then dunk. You're yeah, like, exactly. "Come on, you can't have both." Pick one. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> right, um, right. Interesting. So you, I mean, that must have been, because I remember our situation. Like for me, it was like I didn't, I didn't live near the French Quarter. I didn't, but it's like whenever we had access to like booze or whatever, like whenever there was like a festival, because I lived by the Greek Church, or it was like, mm. you know, there was like New Year's. We would go fucking crazy, and we would just get as fourteen year olds just get trashed. Yeah. You, this must have been it for you constantly, right? Like, are you just getting, oh, are you like yeah. a little kid getting fucked up all the time? I mean, it's, it's part of those Greek fests. I went to the, they had those in New Orleans. They were fucking amazing. You get that baklava and the, the wine the best. going. The best. The, the, the hairy ladies. Yes. But, uh, First time I saw breasts at a, at a Greek festival. Oh, yeah. wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're so fun. But, uh, yeah, we. I mean, booze is just such a part of the culture there, and bars were there's like a bar on every corner, and you could just stroll in, and and drinks are cheap as shit. There's a bar called Miss Mays. It's still there. Every drink was a dollar. No matter you got a <laughs> rum and coke, a Long Island iced tea, or a High Life, it was all a dollar. And I, I think it still might be that way. Incredible. And you know, so we'd pregame, and then we'd go to the bar, and you try to make out with a girl. You drive around all night. You get you get forties, and you go to the park after, and you pass out, whatever it was. But it was just such a part of it. And our parents were drunks too, so we right. just went with it. Right. Now, okay, so let me ask you this, because I, you know, I look. 
the Lord has blessed me. He's made me look the way I look, right? Mm -hmm. But I myself have gone a little bit of a tear. I'm 31, actually. The last couple... Uh, ironically, the toothless year is the year I've fucked the most, right? Nice. Uh, I'm just fucking and sucking, trying to, you know... And I think for me, it is a little pathological. It is a little bit of like, I didn't fuck when I was younger. Right. You know, I wasn't in a long-term relationship, but the hallmarks of that behavior, right? Like you were in a relationship, but also I'm wondering, was that you as a kid too? Like, did you not fuck as much as your peers? Was that something you were nervous about? Did you, do you have any hangups that way? Or like, you think you were just making up for lost time because of the relationship? Or do you think there was something in adolescence where you were like, ah, I'm trying to prove to my, I'm trying to prove to my 15 year old self that I'm not gay by fucking this many women. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, That's were you, a were you a slutty little kid is what I'm asking? I think, uh, I was definitely a dweeb. I was an outcast outsider, whatever, uh, you know, skateboarder, chain wallet, that whole thing. So, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You know, I was always jealous of the football jock guys who got the hot blonde and everything. But I think for me, it's just, it's more insecurity. It's more like, wow, this girl, this, attractive beautiful funny woman likes me yeah to me once i got them to like me i was i was good i or you know how sometimes like a girl's like come over and fuck me you're like i'm good that's all i right. need i, I just want it, you to want i want to know that you wanted to absolutely yeah. bro which is yes. sad and 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 gross or whatever but like i'm good i, I can jerk off to that text <laughs> and, so i guess uh, my question was did you fuck is it like when did you fuck for the first time was it with somebody you like did you have like a relationship like this kind of stuff like was that a hang-up for you as a kid or did it yeah. you know what i mean were you a late well, bloomer in that sense yeah i guess i guess so but i had the high school sweetheart like the 13 year mm. relationship or 12 year that was in what sophomore year oh year. my so god that really the gamut college and holy I'm from the south. shit so like people in the south get married in louisiana you get married at like 20 or, or 19 right. or 21 Right. And I knew I wasn't going to do that, but we were together. We just assumed our families knew each other. We, we just assumed, like, this is locked up. Right, you know? right, so right. So we, we banged everywhere, in and out, yes, inside, yes. outside, and every which way. But I think it's more the acceptance, insecurity thing. Right. Yeah, with the, and I, I don't care for the term womanizing, because isn't mm -hmm. that kind of insulting to ladies? Like, you're using all these women, like, well, they wanted to fuck, too. This is right. all fun, consensual sex. You're, you're, you're kind of demeaning them, like, they don't know what's happening. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, I guess, I mean, yeah, for the most part, I guess as long as you, as long as everyone knows what's up. Yeah, of Cause, course. Because, oh yeah, it's not like you're lying to the, you're not like, I want to marry you. And then you're like, you're like can yeah, we please, yeah. yeah, you just have a prop engagement ring that you give to every woman you meet. And you're like, there's right. something about you. I don't right, know what it is, right. but. Uh, yeah, and it's like Marill's joke, like. To me, the consent is the best part, you know? Like, right, yeah, If, if yeah. you don't have that, I'm not into it. If a girl's like, right. I don't know, I'm like, oh, good, all right, I'm out of here. I yeah. don't want to deal with that at all. Like, that scares the shit out of me. Right. So, yeah. Okay, so a former a former uh, insecure man who conquered, who's who's working on conquering it, um, and, yeah, you know. Yeah, I mean, stage fright as well, and that's a conquer, you know? Right, like, right, right. I'm, I'm scared and, and bad at so many things. Like, if I don't do stand-up for a week, I, I'm, I'm scared to do it again. I know it's br that's what's brutal about this for me because I haven't been on stage since I don't since it fucking shut down. You know what I mean? Wow. So it's like I don't even I'm like a I'm like a World War Two widow whose husband is missing in action. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like if he comes back, he comes back. But I don't I'm not getting my hopes up. You know what I mean? I'm starting a new life. Right. <laughs> I'm just like you know, hopefully he comes back someday. Yeah, um, I get but, it. I mean, there's some outdoor shows that are good good transition back in if you want to dip a toe in yeah i might have to dip a little toe in um, dip a toe. but another another um he, this is just this is another part of the show another big tenant of the show of my personal philosophy is that you have to lose a lot you have to take a lot of l's you have to be uh you have to be you have to almost get embarrassed or you have to like you have to have things to overcome to make you stronger uh, yeah, yeah. so i guess this is just a pretty this is just a I just want to know if are there any like lows you'd like to talk about? What are some like funny, some like play, things you've done where you're like Jesus fucking, Christ, I'm oh. here. You know what? What have I done? Like oh, why man. did I do this? That feels uh, like my whole life. I yeah, mean, yeah. I mean, I do it. I do it like almost pathologically, and uh, like it's like uh, even Jerry Seinfeld. You know, I have his number, and yeah. the things I've texted him and been like, oh. <laughs> 
promised myself I wouldn't do it, but you know, you have a couple beers, or you're alone on yeah, the road, you just yeah. go, fuck it, you push send like a yeah. maniac. Right. And then he'll write back three days later, like, what? Yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. God, yeah. What am I doing? <laughs> Sorry, I lost my, uh, my headphones there. But no, yeah. No worries. So I got a million of those, especially with ladies, like embarrassing myself. And Give me a nice embarrassment. Oh, Give me a nice man. embarrassment. I'll tell you one while you All think. Right, you, you go. Uh, I was, I had just broken up with somebody and um, I had just broken up with somebody and I was just fucking feeling low. And I just go to this dive bar basement show. And a woman that I just, I'm not attracted to, you know what I mean? Like, I was not my type, not most people's type, uh, you yeah, know what I mean? Care. Like, Got just it. comes up to me and is like, um, I noticed in your uh, comedy you talked about hooking up with people. Would you be interested in hooking up with me? And just, like, very autistically lays it out there, and I'm just like... I love that. I'm like, yeah, and I was like, and you know, that's what you're saying, like, the consent is the best part. At that moment, all I needed was, like, somebody to fucking believe in me, but yeah. I just, like, I'm walking past, I'm walking out, and all my friends are like, oh, my, God, what is going on here? I'm just like, <laughs> the pre it's almost like the preemptive walk of shame. You haven't right. even fucked yet. You're just, it's like the shame, the parade, the shame parade, the parade right. of shame, where it's like, yes. gonna see you, fellas, it's 10.30 p.m., I'm just gonna cut my losses and... Fuck this uh, stranger, and oh, uh, that's not so bad. I mean, we've all had our 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 share of Stavroses. Sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We did. <laughs> I'll just say this: if we were wrestling, we would be in the same weight class. Oh, got uh, it. Just, that's got it. but which is not a problem. I'm also I'm open to that. I'm just yeah. that's one of the one of the uh, factors here. Anyway, we get back to her, and it's like I also don't want to fuck though. I just wanted a girl to say I want to fuck you. Yes. So we get back to her place, and I'm just like. And I'm no stranger to not getting hard. Certainly, that's um, a, 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 a common refrain in, in my story. Uh, but this is not, this was like, I didn't want, my body was right. like, it was like a defense mechanism. Right. You know what I mean? It's like, the, it's like, you know, the opposite of a puffer fish getting large. It was like, my <laughs> dick was just shrinking, was trying to yeah. protect myself from my decisions. <laughs> right, and, right. Um, and, and it was just like... It, uh, this woman had the worst smelling feet of all time. Oh, that's a new one. It was it was tough. It was just like the smells not right, and also she just wanted to. Uh, she really wanted to weirdly be like I had to put like girls like a finger in the mouth. She wanted like <laughs> my whole hand in her mouth. Wow. And I'm just and I'm just over there like you know. Yeah. Just like sadly, like throat fucking a woman with my like she's a pup. It's a reverse puppet situation. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and it was just like I don't know, man. I'm just not getting. I'm just like I just sleep it all. And I'm like I should have left. I bust. I bust in like a weird. I tug my little penis until it comes. So I'm like, all right, I'm free to go. And then yeah. she just like locks on to me, and I don't have the mm. self esteem to leave. It's also like 3 a.m. Right. And I'm like, all right, I'm setting an alarm for seven. Yeah. And I'm getting the fuck out of there. And then I'm somehow... I don't leave. I'm guilted into fucking again in the morning. It was uh, truly beautiful. It was truly uh, horrible. Uh, just yeah. a bad situation that I got into because of my insecurity. I was just sort of like... It, you can weirdly get... You know, I understood what it was like when girls feel... Like, I usually don't understand... Because date, you know, dating and fucking... It's easier when you're a girl. But I feel like they have been in that position where they're just like emotionally vulnerable. Just want somebody... Like, if that girl had made me, like, a fucking... If we had gotten pizza and she had, like, given me a hug, yeah. it would have been the best night of my life. Totally, but I was used totally. I was used for my, my little body. Uh, I get it. I get it. And and it feels weird to be used for your body. Yes, yes. It's not... It's a, it's a new feeling for me. Yeah. Uh, but just when you said the stinky feet and the overweight and everything, it makes you realize, like, oh, man, we're just talking about this... A gal and how many women are sitting around going, oh, I fucking hooked up with this guy. His balls totally. smelled like ass. His asshole had a dingleberry, and his toenails, you know, <laughs> farting, and he had fucking crazy nipples. And so yeah, yeah, I don't know. I've got a million of these. Now, now that you told me that story, I'm like, oh, that was that was the you know high school for me. It was, yeah, <laughs> it was insane. One time, me and a friend went to a bar called The Boot, and they had okay. quarter pitcher night. So it was just one of those bananas yeah. blackout bars. And, you know, last call was coming around, so you just kept, like, dancing on girls. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Girl and hump to a, like, Montel Jordan. <laughs> and one girl was into it. She was pushing back, and I was pushing. And then 
she was like, do you have a friend? And I was like, yeah, I had a friend over there. And he sat at the bar and he, she goes, you want to introduce him to my friend? And I said, yeah. So we all started talking. We go back to my friend's parents' house. Nice. We're in his childhood bedroom. He got the hot one because he's like a tall, good looking guy. Right. And I got the weird, you know, the one you had. <laughs> right, and right, right. We were on the floor and he was on his little bed and he was plowing away and <laughs> killing and you know, he's got a huge dong and the whole thing. And she was hot and I was watching him and I'm down there and my gal's like, eh, all right, what about us? And I was like, ah, I couldn't get it up and it was so bad and <laughs> oh man it was, he was pounding away and she was moaning and screaming and he was killing it and i was like god i can't do it i couldn't do it you're like why don't we just watch why don't we watch our friends fucking jack each other off why don't I we just we, <laughs> i think we cuddled and, and did that kind of like ate popcorn and critiqued and we were like waldorf and stack just like oh that was a good move hey, look at that yeah you have a little notepad out you're like yeah. interesting <laughs> Never seen yeah. someone treat the clit that way. Um, I have a weird, tell me if you have this problem, and this might be some emotional intimacy shit. If I really truly like the girl and like find her interesting and, and compelling, I can't get it up. But if I, I don't Dude, like her, it I'm takes like, ah, me I'm a porn star. A hundred percent. It takes me like three ta- three goes with a girl to get over that. I'm a hundred percent the same way. Yeah. When I'm like, I've had a great time. It's fucking awesome. I'm, I can't, it's the same, that's why I've taken a dick pill to, to sort of right. supplement it. But even sometimes it's so psychological that it's like, yes, it's, all just, it's purely psychological. Yeah. I'm the same it's way. Amazing. Same. It's so fucked. Amazing uh, how in, in, uh, controlling the brain can be and how powerful those thoughts are. And just think about this. Think about all those non boner nights where you're embarrassed, you're ashamed. She's upset. She's frustrated. Right. Kids now will never have that with the blue chews and the hymns and the Viagra. <laughs> they will never go through that heartache. Therefore, they'll be weaker as people. Right. Absolutely. I feel like yes. I feel like I spent the my the the early years of my life, my sexual life, my late twenties, <clears throat> sort of like training with my eyes closed. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like it's like I have all my other senses are heightened, and that's how I feel about fucking. It's like I fucked without a penis for five years of my life where it's like <laughs> i've i've learned how to finger pop i'm great at eating pussy yeah. uh, you know i'll i just i just i've had to learn all my other senses so that now th- thanks to the chemical chemically hard dicks i'm good to go yeah, but you're it's daredevil i'm daredevil 100 yeah. percent. i'm shoving the little stick up the little blind stick in her in her <laughs> pussy <laughs> right, but exactly uh, yeah dude 100 percent. but then once you get over that hurdle then it's the best when you actually oh, yeah. then it's like oh this is this fucking rocks yeah um, yeah you really have to get into your brain and, and really deal with it and then it goes away totally totally and then when you break up with that girl you have to start using dick pills again because you don't because love used to make your dick hard and now ah, that's gone you know good point that's where uh, i'm at now yeah <laughs> oh oh i didn't oh sorry to hear that buddy i didn't even know uh, no, 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 no. Oh, it's love, good. the love part. Of love, not love okay. Dick. I thought you meant yeah. you broke. You know, you could broke up and you were just dropping no, no, it on the no, casual. No. Um, okay, she's, well, good. She's sitting next to me. Nice. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I threw her out for this. It's too, it's too uh, yeah. juicy. Absolutely, one hundred percent. But yeah, um, I banged a, a lady, a ma, a ma, a guy's wife once, and then she was like, "My husband never fucks me like this. Ah, yeah, he won't fuck me anymore." Yeah, and yeah, yeah. It was bru- brutal. <laughs> <laughs> it was also kind of hot, but she—I mean, she looked like Judy Gold. It was horrific. <laughs> we banged in her salon. She had a salon. She oh my up god! Up bar. Same friend. <laughs> Same friend. Dead. Yeah, he died of heroin overdose. Uh, <laughs> well, was a listen, wild one. Yeah, he had all. Yeah, you can't. Bur- he, he burned bright fast. You know yes. what I mean? He was that kind of guy. Totally, you're a nice totally. slow. You're a nice slow build. Did he yeah. fuck the Did he fuck the salon owner too, or was he just? Yeah, there? We, we both did, and uh, <laughs> I, I, I had to go first because he was packing heat. This kid. So and here's the clinker. At the end of it, she gave us haircuts and products. <laughs> True story. True story. <laughs> she was Mwah. appreciative. That's beautiful, man. You come out with a perm. After 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 fucking after, after double teaming some fifty year old loveless marriage bitch, I'm gonna uh, burn my friend's yeah. at cornrows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah.
<laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, look, I think we've established your bona fides here as a as an expert, as a man who's lived a life uh, that is, you know, that is worthy of giving our callers here some advice. So why don't we get into it? And also, by the way, guys, if you're liking these stories and you don't know Mark, go. You've got a special on YouTube right now. So go to the fucking special. Uh, out to lunch. Out to lunch. Really fucking funny. I love it. Thank uh, you, buddy. Yeah, it's so funny, dude. I've, I always I always watch, man. I love I love when we're on the same show. When stand up used to exist, yeah. and also I have to say, man, we like even when I before I even started, before I moved to New York, I think I opened for you. Remember that shitty bar in Towson, or like you were with Schumer. Oh, the yeah. Irish place, you know. Yeah. And it was like it was just fucking cool to watch. To you know, I was just a comic in Baltimore. I was like, whoa, you. I think you'd done Conan. I was a fan. And you were wow. just cool. The, your material is great. So I, I always love watching you. And uh, oh, the special is great, thanks, man. man. Appreciate so, it. That means a lot. You're a killer ev- as well. Oh, thanks. Please. Uh, Everybody knows Stav's a kill. Thanks, man. But yeah, guys, go watch. Especially if you're watching on YouTube right now. Just fucking after you're done, don't fucking cut this off to watch. Mark. <laughs> Mark's doing fine. I know. Right, right. <laughs> but, but he's got, be there. He's got be millions there. of views. But no, go watch it. You'll like it. So anyway. Um, let's, let's get into it. Ralph, hit us with our first call, buddy. Hey, Stavi, baby. This is Griffin from Vegas. And so I got a question for you. So basically I'm like, I'm a bigger guy. I'm kind of jacked a little bit, but also okay. like my girlfriend thinks I'm like a cop and everything, but I want her peg. I want her to like fuck my ass real bad. <laughs> but like, how do I, how do I tell her that? Like me being like a bigger guy, I don't think she knows that I'm into that. So I was just wondering if you had any advice for me. Also, advice for like, I don't know, that's it. Thank you, Salvi. <laughs> Love you. Hopefully you get this. Bye. Respect. Respect. Mark, you missed it on the solo because I do a little bit of the show by myself. Uh, I start the show. We had a, a gay guy call in who wanted to be pegged by a woman. And he got pegged by this hot stripper. So our second wow. pegging, of the, pegging of the episode, which I love. Nice. Um, so basically his question is, he's, I guess... It sounds like what you're worried about is you're a big guy, you're a little jack. You think you're, what your girlfriend is attracted to is your masculinity, it seems like. Mm. And he's worried that by asking to be pegged, that is not a masculine act in and of itself. That seems to be the hang-up to me. I don't know. That's how I read it. What do you yeah. think? I think you're right. Uh, and I think it's a new – it's 2020. We're in a pandemic. I think, you, again, with the mailroom – Throw, right. hey lady, give me a pinky. Let's yes. see what a pinky is. And yep. then one day just show up with a fucking pepper shaker sized <laughs> dildo, like a big black olive garden motherfucker, a macaroni grill. Yes. And, take and her out for take her out for linguini yeah. and then ask her if she wants pepper. If she yeah. says yes, then you're like, all right, well, I'm gonna need you to put this in my ass also. There um, you go. And I think I think ladies want to do that. There's a lot of penis envy. I mean, she has the power. She's got a strap on. You're on all fours. Yes. I don't know. I think it could be cool. I, I agree. I agree with you. I think part of what I was going to say is that I don't think it's inherently – I I think society probably tells us it's inherently not masculine. But yeah. the girls that you're with, they probably aren't going to see you as less of – also – Girls are pretty fluid sexually too. Yeah, I don't think yep. it's. I don't think they're going to see you as any less of who you are just because right. of what you're into sexually. Yes. Especially if you're in a relationship with her and she knows who you are. She knows the kind of guy you are. I agree. She might even find it hot. But yeah, start in the mail room, pinky. I always tell people get your ball sucked. Get a low ball suck. You're halfway to the ass, Ooh. and then and then get her to suck a little lower, and then I like slowly, it. and then. Girls might want to eat your ass. I mean, that's you just yeah. gotta kind of work your way up. I think, I think it once you get a pinky and you read her vibes, if yes. she's like, then it might be a hard sell. But if she's all about it, if she's fucking in there, getting you fucking, yeah. <laughs> you're like, if she's like finally and fucking pulls a tub of Vaseline up from under her bed and then right. fucking gets all gets three knuckles in, you're golden. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Agreed. Yeah. I think I think you're going to be all right. If she says no to the pinky, just no, you don't have to go any further. Right, 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 right. Or or if it's really important to you, you might have to have like a, a sober conversation about it. But I think I think you're going to be fine. I think she's going to yeah. be into it. I think she'll at least, if it's important to you, I think you can bring it up and be like, I'd like to try this. And yes. also, it's it's there's also the idea of sexual bartering. You got to do maybe you got to do something she's really into. 
Usually it's the other way around. Usually the hack like th- the hack thing is like, oh, I'll do, I'll build a deck and she'll let me right. have anal. But these are new times. Maybe yes. you have to build a deck to get your ass fucked. Right. We don't, yeah, you do know, the dishes. Do you know? the dishes to get your Something. ass fucked. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I agree. Um, all right. Next one, Big Ralphie. It's, uh, uh, so I had a question. Uh, my, uh, my girlfriend and I are uh, newly uh, in, an, in an open relationship. Um, she's been hooking up with all kinds of girls. Um, nice. I and myself have not had very much luck. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting uh, a little overwhelmed by like the actual thought of like meeting up with someone right now. And I don't know if that's like the pandemic or just me being um, a little bitch. Uh, but I have been talking to this uh, this girl, she wants to meet up. Um, she's uh, really cute, uh, but I found out that she is. Um, she recently opened up to me that she was trans, like we had, uh, and she was like very concerned with meeting up with people because of that. Uh, so I guess <laughs> my uh, question close. here is: um, Should I let this girl fuck me in the ass? <laughs> uh, I've, uh, I'm very open to the idea, uh, but I'm worried yeah. that if I get in there and her uh, her dick is bigger than mine, I might develop transphobia. Uh, right. Thank right. you in advance, Bobby. Love you. Yes. Respect. That's fascinating. Let me just go ahead and let me just go ahead and answer this for you. Yes. You just go ahead and get fucked in the ass by this girl. Yeah, um, <laughs> might as well try it. Why not? Open relationship. Your girl's hooking up with a bunch of girls. You're like, I see you hooking up with a bunch of cis girls, and I raise you getting fucked in the ass by a woman. Yeah. How about that? <laughs> yeah, you've always wanted a bigger dick. Well, now I got it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I always... Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, wow. That's... That, man, the... the I hate to sound like Grandpa Norman, but like yeah. it's it's been one upped the whole sexual world and totally. like kinky and all that. There's so many more elements now. You got trans and pegging and all this shit. Right. Yeah, I think I yeah fucking do it. Who gives a fuck, dude? Yeah. In you an open it. relation, try it out. It'll be nice. Yeah, you never know. Yeah. It seems like it's something you you said you want to experiment and look. Yeah, she might have a bigger dick than you. That's gonna be something you're gonna to have to come to terms with. But yes. Um, I think you got it. First of all, I think you got to get on the board sexually against your girlfriend. Yeah. Because the point. only positive way to look at an open relationship is adversarial. And yeah. she's blowing you out of the water right now. So, yeah, yeah. I but yeah, agree. But try it. Why not? The tale as old as time, though. I know, we both know a guy. I'm not going to say his name. He married a woman. It was getting a little rocky. So they said, let's do an open marriage just to kind of like try to breathe right. some life into this thing. She got laid by Tom, Dick, and Harry. He couldn't right, find right, one gal, right, and they right. eventually got divorced because it was too yeah. humiliating. But uh, yes. I think these open things are always bad news. This gal is. This gal sounds like she's you know running circles around this guy. Well, I gotta say, I, I'm in a weird place where it's like, I could see. It, I mean, I could see it working if the two people. I mean, certain people. That's just their thing, right? Yeah. Like he doesn't. That she seems like this is her thing. And I can, I know for me personally, I don't know, this might be weirdly, it, I think it's homophobia that's making me open-minded, but I mm. wouldn't care if my girlfriend fucked girls. And like, no, that, I, wouldn't either. I know that is literally homophobia. That's me being like, ah, oh, knock yourself out with that, with girls, who cares? Like, is a that lesbian. Because Because on some level, you're not threatened by them. You're like, it's not right. a valid, it's not a valid, like, it's, it's sort of like... I think if you really unpack that logic, I, you're I like you. only a man is competition to me. It's misogynistic and it's homophobic on some level because you're like, Meh, I don't care. If I because it's like it wouldn't be if you were like fuck whoever. I don't care. I'm not possessive. But if right. you're possessive about men and you don't give a fuck about women, on some level you're saying like, who fucking cares about? Yeah, some bitch can eat my girlfriend's pussy. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> like that's that's like there is that element of thinking to it. Well, um, I think you're worried about the dong. You're worried about her getting pounded and loving it, and like you that's know, what I'm saying, on. though. Why, I know, but I don't think that's homophobic. Yeah, I see I, what you're saying. I get your point, but well, she's getting strapped you, the fuck up too. You know what I'm saying? She's getting that. yeah. That's probably true. That's probably true. But there's something about the male aggression, like him picking her up and throwing her and bl- blowing a load in her face and all yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I don't know. That's tough. But here's the question: If he bangs this trans woman or this trans person bangs him. Right. Is that is that cooler or is she going to be like, oh, 
are you gay or what? You know? <laughs> I think it's to me. It seems like this girl is from the limited context that we have. She seems pretty open. This guy, yeah. I didn't seem to me that this was this motherfucker's idea. Right. You know what He's I mean? Take what he can get. And I think if anything, a girl that's trying to get into an open relationship and fucking a bunch of girls, she would almost see it as a badge of honor to have her uh-huh. boyfriend be fucked by a trans girl. She'd be like, right. how cool am I? Well, I'll tell you that. What kind of an ally am I? I shared my boyfriend's ass with the community. That's how. <laughs> that's what I'm doing for the T in LGBTQ. <laughs> That's a good point. Now, let me ask you this. So this yes. Is this racist? Hit me with it. Let, let's say you're in an open relationship. You're not worried about these gals, you know, the homophobic thought. What if a Chinese guy was plowing her? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just asking. I'm just asking. <laughs> gonna fucking turn into it um yes that is racist mark <laughs> okay okay i feel like i would be less threatened but that's only for the porn i've seen i've never had sex with a chinese man. dude there's so <laughs> that's so good there's but i i think you need to see more chinese guys there's some threatening there's some guys that oh, yeah? i think would really uh you'd really be sweating about i'll okay. send you send i'll send you some some, some pics that i've been jacking off to yeah, please. Uh, but <laughs> I mean, you don't want Bruce Lee in there because he's fucking exactly. ripped and he's sexy. And he's, I think he's like part white. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Let's move on. We're moving on. Hit us with the next one, Ralph. <laughs> Woo! Thank God this is live. <laughs> yes. Hey, uh, uh, so I had a question. Uh, my, uh, my my girlfriend and I are uh, newly uh, in, a, in an open. <laughs> no, that's the same guy. Savvy, Sorry, that was the wrong one. Baltimore. No worries. Um, a few months ago, earlier this year, when it was still cool to have sex with strangers, I had a threesome with like this cute young professional type, like mid thirties married couple nice. um, that has like a baby or a toddler together Ooh. or something. Um, and it was fun. Everybody had a good time. Um, but then a couple weeks ago, I got a message from just the husband, like outside of the group chat that we all had together, right. saying that his wife was traveling um, for work oh, no. and that she was out of town and that he wanted to see me alone without her and not to tell her and that it was a secret and blah, blah, blah. Mm. So I politely declined. Um but the question that I have for you is, should I say something to her? Um, mm. I haven't because it really feels like they're truly strangers and it's definitely none of my business to like fuck up this marriage. Um, I kind of feel bad though, because like if that was my husband and the father of my children, like I would definitely want to know, but I don't want to be involved and it feels like it's not my place. Yeah. Um, am I doing the right thing by not saying anything? Um, I need a second opinion. Thanks, Savi. Love you. Fascinating. Wow. This is a tough one. Yeah. I I think uh, I love how she's – This people are so fascinating because everybody evens out. You know, Bill Cosby's pull your pants up, sweaters, American dad, but then he's also drugging chicks. You know, everybody <laughs> right. evens out. Right, right, right. What's fascinating about her is she's like, I'm down to fuck strangers. I'm swinging. I'll fuck you and your girlfriend and your wife. But – this feels off. Right, This right. Uh, random, yeah. you know, hookup. Well, I see it. I get it, though. I know I know what you mean. Like, on face value, you're like, oh, threesomes. Why not get some dick on this? You know, like, yeah. I think both of us have fucked somebody who's in a relationship and not cared because we're scumbags. But she's a moral woman who doesn't, you know, uh, doesn't, doesn't want to do it, draws a line, has a clear boundary here of, like, what's appropriate sure. um it's tough because i know what you mean if it was you you'd lo- you'd want to know but yeah. i just have a hard time i have a hard time s- 
snitching. I don't know. It's like yeah, it's no, like I it's get like it. I get it's it. not. I understand that it not being your business thing and the like. Yeah. I don't know personally. I don't, and I I this guess I have one. Hmm. I think she shot. I think this is what she should do. She shot the guy down. Hopefully, the guy gets takes the hint, leaves her the hell alone, and that's just the end of it. Right. Yeah, that that's the that's the dream uh, ideal world. Yeah. But I think if he hits her again, then maybe say something. Okay. Yeah. If this becomes a pattern, sure. I guess yes. definitely. Maybe you can be like, because you're right. They're strangers, right? On some level, this isn't somebody you know. It's not your business in any other way. These are people that you fucked, and this guy is he's 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 wiling out. I would yeah. say I personally, I don't think there's really a wrong answer here. I think it's really your personal what your personal sort of gut is uh yeah i just Be- I, I kind of tend to go to the like it's not really my business i'm not right you know i i'm somebody you fuck like there's some it's somebody you fucked once yeah, ex- like exactly it's you a weird hookup back. um it's all it's not it's 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 devious i guess but it's not so devious because they've already fucked it's not like he's just hitting up a lady at work well i don't see i don't think that i actually don't think that makes a difference i don't think that okay. because you already fucked her i think He's hitting her up. He's asking her to cheat. Right. There's a difference between like something his wife's into. If his right. wife wants to fuck girls together, you're fine. He didn't do anything even sort of wrong in that situation. Where it becomes wrong is when you try and cheat on your wife. Yeah, so I to me, I'm, I'm it, that this world. that that to me doesn't fucking matter, right? Because it's yeah. like you had it goes from like doing something with your wife's consent to doing something behind her back. That's where the betrayal starts. To me, it doesn't matter that they fucked somebody together, right? Yeah. And but this I just guy will fuck up eventually and someone else will rat him out. And so I think the the results will happen. Yeah. It sounds like this guy's a little uh you know trigger happy with the with the uh the cheating. So I yeah. think he'll get fucked eventually. Right. And especially if, because if you want to be the person to do it, that's on you. Especially because the types of people that are having like threesomes with married couple couples are the kinds of girls that would love to ch- snitch and then post the screenshots on Twitter for a hundred thousand likes. <laughs> right. Right. So to me, I don't know. My gut reaction is saying like, stay out of it. Unless I think Mark has a point. If he keeps coming after you and he keeps, and he's like, he crosses the threshold where he's sort of harassing you about it or is, right. is making unwanted advances then maybe. But I think, I don't know. Just stay out of it. it yeah. You I know agree. what I mean? Like I, I just, I don't, they're strangers. It's a random hookup. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, he's got kids and a wife. and Yeah, do you, you want know, to get maybe... the, This could be a headache for you, and you did nothing to deserve exactly. this. Exactly. You know exactly. what I mean? You don't really... Problem. You could... I will say this. If you do say something, you're going out of your way to do something nice for this woman, which yes. is fine. If that's what you feel like you have to do, I understand that. But it's also like this could produce headaches for you, and all you did was get your pussy worked over by a married couple. You didn't right. sign up to be in the middle of a fucking love triangle. Yes. Um, well said. Yes. You so be in that divorce court one day. Yes. But you know, having said that, if you need further, I, th- I believe you said you're from Baltimore. And if you need further um, help with this, I I'll probably be visiting my family pretty soon. Ooh. So feel free to DM. Yeah. And we can talk. We can get to the bottom of this. <laughs> <laughs> Now she's going to call your wife. <laughs> yeah. Single, baby. Um, nice. All right. You got time for one more, Mark? What do you one say, more, buddy? One more. One more. Let's do one more. Um, hit, us with, hit us with the finale there, Ralph, unless that was the finale. Uh, I got another good one. All right. Hit us with another good one. Stuff. What's up? Love the show. Uh, it's Paul calling from uh, Mississippi. Uh, I've got a quick question for you. Me and my fiance just moved uh to a new town and she used to live here has a couple friends but we're like making friends and made friends with another couple hung out with them like twice and the thing that's getting me is like they got real drunk and texted us and said that they wanted to fuck us and we're not into that um no disrespect to them but we're it's it's not our bag and uh i'm straight up just trying to like 
they're they're real cool otherwise just trying to make some friends and keep some friends um right. do you have any advice on how to keep these people as friends without fucking them how thanks to, uh, how to keep friends up the good a couple. work later buddy <laughs> oh oh and uh appreciate appreciate you the work you're doing in the ball community of course that's what i'm here for baby boy nice. um let yeah I mean, hmm. that's not a problem. This is a good problem to have. Good your problem. friends want to fuck you. You're hotter than your friends. You don't have to <laughs> fuck them. There's going to be no weirdness. Just say you're not into it. You're Mormon or you're half gay, whatever it is. Right. You're fine. Yeah. Let them down. Let them down easy. And they'll probably be cool. They're probably used to this. They probably try and fuck. Yeah. Every- Look, I got news for you. You're you're probably cute, but they probably try and fuck everybody. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, if the vibe yeah. is right. So, don't pat yourself on the back too much. They tried to fuck yeah. the mailman and his yeah. wife and the Uber <laughs> driver and his wife and, you know, you name it. Um, so, yeah, l- let them down easy. And look, if they're like, well, then we're not interested, then you might have to eat some pussy if you really want somebody to fucking, you know, play cornhole with on the weekends. <laughs> How much do you need friendship? Enough to suck cock? Here's, Something to think here's about. Here's what you do. <laughs> great, great t-shirt. Here's what you do. Say, we're thinking about it. Send us a video. Mm. And if we like what we see, we'll do it. Now you get a free video of your yes. friend, your ugly friends You've fucking. Seen them fuck. And, and you can still say no. And right. you get the video. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Great idea. Um, yeah, you're fine. Let them down easy. If they say no, then I think you're going to be okay, though. But yeah, look, the, yeah. it is hard, though, because you're constant. It's a little weird because you're like, back of your mind you're like are they gonna try and fuck us again you know what i mean like there is a little bit there is like can you can you be at ease around them are they gonna try and pull some moves good point thanksgiving is gonna be weird this year yeah (laughs) yeah um all right man well i think that's gonna do it for us enjoy the wife swap my friend uh mark thank you so much dude very fun very fun episode appreciate you coming on and uh everybody go watch the special uh, go check out Tuesdays with Stories. I was just on it recently, a couple weeks ago. Yes, that's right. And uh, yeah, uh, just go check out Mark. And thank you, buddy. I appreciate thank it. You. I'll Have talk to you soon. Feel free to Thanks. leave. I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap up here with them. So, All right. but Praise thank you, Allah. dude. Mazel. All great. right. How about another one from Mark, everybody? That was fucking great. Um, he fucking rocks. And uh, yeah, fun show, good show. Uh, I think that's going to do it for us. Love you guys. See you see you soon.